Hey guys, my name is John Hamilton and today I'm going to be teaching you how to set up a door that your player can interact with. So they can click E and the door's going to open and then they can click E again and the door's going to close. So this could be used for a lot of things like first person shooters or even top down games. It's very flexible, you just have to change it a little bit for those kind of circumstances. And also subscribe here if you want to get updated every single week when I come out with new... Right, so as you can see here, I have just set up a basic door with some animation on it. And you can go download this in the description or make it yourself, but it's pretty easy. And also set up this first person kind of thing on the second layer. It just allows you to walk around. You don't really need this, but this is going to be great for testing. Alright. So, coming back to the first layer, we we want to set this up so that when our player walks into it and clicks E, then it's going to open the door. So, the first thing we're going to do for that is add a, a thing to detect if the player is near and is clicking E. So, what I'm going to do is we're going to add a cube, and we're going to move this up. Then we're going to scale this down and move it up to about here scaling it up yep so it's kind of like out of the door a bit more so we can scale up a bit more and we can apply scale and there we go so I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna set this minimum draw type to wire so that just sees the what so you just see the wireframe and it just makes it easier so I'm gonna come over here also and we're gonna change the physics type to Sensor, and we're going to go detect actuators, and, uh, sorry, actors, sorry, and we're going to make it invisible. So what you see is, it's going to part to see if we go into texture mode, what you see, you can't see anything, and that's perfect. All right, so, we want to detect if the player is near or is like hitting this little box thing. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to bring our player up and whatever your player object is, like the main thing that collisions with everything, what you want to do is come over here to Game Logic and you want to find this little panel, the Properties panel. What you, what you want to do here is add another property. I usually set it to Boolean, it just, I don't know, that's just me. You can have it whatever you like, but the main thing right here is the first little bit. Now... I usually just call this player, um, it's just the most simple way and it will just work for everything and it's easy. But you can call that whatever you like. So this box is going to detect if we are collisioned, if player is collisioned with it. So what you want to do is you want to go here, sorry not that, add that in. And you want to go add a sensor and you're going to go a collision sensor. And if we collision with player we are going to do a couple of things so what we want to do is we want to play some animation on this object right here the door but you might think that you need to set a message here and then receive a message but what you can do is you can hook logic bricks in between other objects so i'll show you right now if i select both of these objects so if i select this box and the door here you go, the door. We can come here to the door up here and we can add a action actuator. And we can set this to open door, which I've set up here. So this is an animation action. And if you don't know about that, then you can just search things about Blender and about animation and you'll come across how what all that stuff is and how it works. But for now, I'm just assuming you know how to use all of that stuff. So what we're going to do is we are going to set this to about 40. Because that is the length of our frames. And we're also going to come here and we're going to change this to ping pong. So what ping pong is going to do is when we click, when this gets an input, such as let's say this collisions with it, it's going to play the animation forward and then stop. But when it gets an input again, it's going to play the animation in reverse and then stop so kind of like ping pong so what you'll see is if we connect this up actually if we need to add to add and control here if we connect this up and then connect this up you just see is we can come here and we can make our player walk and as soon as they collision with the door it opens now what we want to do is we want to have it so when we click E it's going to, 
it's going to open it if we're near enough. So if we add a keyboard action sensor here, sorry, and we set this to E, we can come here and we can connect this up. And what you'll see is if we go into camera view, when we walk close and click E, it opens up the door. And then we click E again, it closes the door. All right. So what you can do, um, because this thing's going to be very annoying when you're trying to get through the door, is you can either come here and change the physics type to triangle mesh, and you can do that, or what I usually do, because it doesn't really matter, is you can just come here and change this to no collision. Because usually you're going to have walls or something here anyway, so... Uh, you're not going to really need any collision with this and it's just going to get in the way. And what we want to do here on the door is come to our mesh, select everything and go control T. That's going to triangulate your mesh. And what you want to do now is come here and come to boxes and we want to come here to this. And as you can see, oh, sorry, collision bounds, as you can see, when we put it on box, it's going for the origin and it's in the wrong place. So what you want to do is just change this to triangle mesh and that's just going to go off the triangles. Now, this doesn't work for everything, but it works in this case very well. So, now you see, we collision with this, we open it, and we can walk through. Right, so, one thing you'll notice is if we click really fast, it's not happening here, but sometimes you get a little bit of it jumping back. Now, I've been testing and the way you're going to fix this if you get a weird jumping like the door will open it will jump back here and then it will come back is for me it's been working if I come here and if I parent this to this outside door frame so if we could go control P parent object what we'll see is that it just should just open perfectly all right so that is they're good, the door's opening, right? Opening and closing and everything is perfect. Now, you might get this door and you might say duplicate it everywhere. You might just go duplicate, duplicate. But that's a little bit annoying because you're selecting all the different things. And you, if you want to change one thing, you have to change them all or set up some other kind of thing for that. So, what you're going to do is you're going to parent this door frame to this object. So... They don't actually have to be parented, but these, all of this together, but it just makes it nicer. And what we want to do is select all of these and go Control G. Now, if we come over here to the object panel and scroll all the way down, you'll find your new group. Now, you can call this whatever you like, but you can call it door, which I'm going to call it. You can call it something else if you like. And we're going to move this onto another layer we are not using. So this very, very last layer down here should be good. So now what you can do is you can go Shift A. And we can come down to Group Instances. And as you can see, um, my player setup is here also as, as a group instance. But you can also see Door is here. So if we add this in, as you can see, here is our door. Now, if we were to go into and play the game you see this just works exactly how it did before. But the nice thing about this is it's just on this one empty object and it's nice and easy. Um, you, you've got no little parts and if you want to change one of them and you have multiple of them, it just works perfectly. So as you can see, we can duplicate this, we can rotate it, put on odd angles and what you'll see is if we go and play the game, we can click E it works perfectly and you can come over here and you can click E and you're going to see that it just all works perfectly. So using this technique you can place your doors around, do all these different kind of things and it's just going to just going to work perfectly. Now one thing to note is that if you, if this, um, on the door, if this door is not parented to this as well, when you add it as a group the animations are going to be off. So you're just going to want it to be parented to something that is not doesn't have animations if you're going to add it as a group instance and be rotate it because it doesn't work if you have that. So you just want that parented to something else. But that's pretty much it. So yeah.
Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about this tutorial, ideas for upcoming tutorials, comment them down below. And you can also subscribe to get updated every single week when I come out with a new tutorial. So, see you next week. Keep blendering and make something awesome in Blender Game Engine.